So today I'm gonna share my Glencoe experience. Carrying this around is a bit challenging. It was oh, amazing <laughs> and I will never forget that experience. Good morning, everybody. The tops of the trees are lit up and it's so beautiful. Before we jump in, I wanna say hello to all of my new subscribers. It seems like there are quite a few of you who found me through my switching from Canon to Fuji video. And a lot of you are fellow Fuji film enthusiasts. So hello, <laughs> welcome to my channel. Just want you to know that I don't have like a set upload schedule and I don't do one thing on my video, my, my channel. I do a variety of things, but the majority of my content is focused on sharing the beauty of Scotland. I don't really focus on like the technical aspect of my photography that much, maybe once in a while, but you know, the majority of my videos are about the experience and that's what I like to share with you all. So today I'm gonna share my Glencoe experience. I wanted to take you guys on a little um, behind the scenes adventure from my trip to Glencoe. I posted a video last week, I believe, or recently, uh, kind of like a short cinematic type video, um, mainly, as a way to celebrate the beauty and the feelings that I had while I was there. I was also testing out my new Fuji equipment, my Fuji film, uh, which is right here. So this is what I had with me the majority of the trip. This was what was around my neck or on a tripod. Um, it's the Fuji X-T4 with the 50 to 140 f 2.8 lens, which this is just such a fun combination. It's heavy. It's a little big, you know, and um, I have a tripod mount here, which helped a lot, but yeah, like carrying this around is a bit challenging. The quality I can get with this definitely makes it worth it. But that said, I did also have my smaller lenses and I, I switched it out once in a while, but I think I just got kind of, um, not addicted, but like excited by the fact that, that I can zoom in so far with this. This is my first super zoom lens, you guys. Like I don't, I'm not familiar with the, the mindset of being able to just see really far away. A few times a year, I do these little solo trips and I find somewhere new to explore. I just, I love being alone. I love connecting with nature by myself. Um, not that I don't love that with other people as well. It's just, it's different when you're by yourself. I can completely take my time. I can take as long as I want doing photography and video um, and sketching and painting. That's a big part of it. And just sitting and observing. And although Wolfie, my partner, loves doing that as well, um, I like doing it alone because it's different when you're not talking to someone about an experience. You're you're completely soaking it all in. It's it's becoming part of you. And I need that in my art practice. So I need to go out into the world and have these experiences and be really immersed in these places and bring that back to the studio for my artwork. And I had never been to Glencoe before, so it was a very exciting prospect. Um, but since it was winter, I honestly was a bit nervous <laughs> because I had seen photos and videos of people that had been there a few days before I went and everything was completely covered in snow, which of course is beautiful, but 
I wanted to see the mountains and to see the earth and the colors and just, yeah, like I love snow, but I wanted a different kind of atmosphere, I guess. And I got it. When I first drove into Glencoe and got my first glimpse of some of the big mountains, thankfully there was this little like pullover area that wasn't full. And so I stopped there and got out with my camera. Uh, I think I had my little DJI Pocket 2, so it's like an easy one to walk with. And I walked up this little trail. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. <laughs> Wow. No. It gets better that way, but the mist trap is amazing. Oh, it's so beautiful. And as soon as I stepped up onto like the higher ledge, I was surrounded by these magnificent giant mountains shrouded in mist. I cried. I, I it was just this immediate visceral reaction, just tears out of joy, out of, out of beauty, <laughs> out of peace, and just so much gratitude. <sighs> I stayed there for quite a while. I stayed there, I took a little time lapse. I enjoyed those moments of just being, uh, having my breath taken away. <laughs> and I will never forget that experience. It was a good start to my Glencoe experience. Since I didn't go into it with like a set plan, um, it was fun because I could just drive until I wanted to stop. And I, as soon as I saw a little pullover, I would stop and get out and enjoy the scenery and just go to the next one and the next one and the next one. And then I would like double back and say, oh, I want to go back to that spot. Ooh, that spot. And thankfully, when I was driving through Glencoe, a lot of back and forth, um, the weather held out. It didn't rain. I didn't experience rain until I went to the West Coast, which I'll tell you in a second. I just love driving through beautiful areas like that with my podcast playing and just soaking up the inspiration. I really wanted to be able to sit outside and sketch and paint and take lots of photos and videos without absolutely freezing. And it was the perfect temperature for that. It's kind of like it is right now. like. Yeah, it's a little chilly, but I'm bundled up and I'm fine. And I can stay out here for as long as I want. Um, but I had the benefit of seeing this magical mist flowing through the hills. I actually lucked out because there wasn't too much traffic either. Uh, and it was a Friday. Maybe that helped. Maybe it's busier on Saturdays and Sundays. But it, like anywhere I wanted to drive and park in Glencoe, there was an open spot. But I could tell that, you know, in the busier times of year, you would probably have trouble parking in a lot of the pull-offs and the parking areas because even some of them were almost full when I was there in the middle of winter. So that was another lucky thing about going when I did. Even though the mist was just absolutely gorgeous, there were two things that 
made it a little bit sad. One is that when I was driving through or to Glencoe and kind of through some areas, um, a lot of the mountains were hidden. And I've seen footage of people driving through Glencoe in the summer when like all of the hills, all of the mountains are covered in green. And you can just see forever and there's mountains forever. And I had such a different experience. My experience was mist and clouds forever. And then peaks of the mountains sticking up out of the clouds, which was also magical. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was just different. And then the other thing is that I couldn't climb up any of the hills because if I did, I would literally be in a cloud. You know, on the ground level where I was mostly, it was kind of clear but then huge clouds of mist would roll through and you could see nothing. And then right above us, for the most part, there was a, huge, a very low hanging cloud or mist of all, at all times. <laughs> so if I had gone up any of the hills I had planned on hiking, uh, it would have just been a whiteout. So I had to stay low to the ground. So I did some hiking lower between the hills, between the mountains, which was really nice. It was just a limited experience. <laughs> so it's another reason that I absolutely have to go back in the summer, in the warmer months. I really want to see it when it's all green. So since one of my original plans was to climb a certain mountain that would have taken probably four hours, like half of my day, I uh, had to change that plan. <laughs> so what I did was I drove all the way through the whole Glencoe range and I went to the west coast that's kind of over by like the Glencoe Loch and, and west and south of that area. Um, I'll put a little map on the screen so you can see what I mean. Uh, so I drove along the coast and I drove down to see Castle Stalker. It's one of those castles with an unfortunate name, <laughs> but it was really pretty. It was all like shrouded in mist. It was kind of mysterious looking. There are a few like easy hikes uh, that wouldn't take you like an entire day. And I really wish I could have done at least one of those because apparently if you go up, you know, to the top of any of these little hills, some of the smaller mountains, you just get the most amazing view of all of the mountains. But I am living proof that even if it is rainy or misty or foggy or whatever, you can still have a glorious experience in Glencoe. And since I only live like four hours from there, it's not gonna be my last visit. <laughs> it definitely won't. I will be, de I'm determined to go back in the summer or at some time when it's all green because I wanna see it at both extremes. Another really cool thing that I didn't know about is that there is a huge um, visitor center in Glencoe. And 
it was like empty when I was there. <laughs> um, but they have a little cafe. So I had some delicious potato and leek soup and a and an oat milk mocha. Oh my gosh. It was perfect to just like warm me up and keep my energy up. Um, and there's also a ton of really good information um, about the area. So everything from hiking trails to places to stay and things to do and the absolutely tragic history of the area, which if you want to know more about, it only takes a few seconds searching on Google. Um, type in Glencoe Massacre. That'll give you an idea of, of what I'm talking about. But um, it's heartbreaking. It just made me extra grateful for being able to experience the area and take in the beauty. My best suggestion for food in Glencoe is the Klagech Hotel. I think it's Klagech. I'll put the name on the screen because it's hard to pronounce. Um, Klagechen hotel. Anyway, it's a little pub tucked in one of the corners of one of the mountains and they had the best veggie burger and chips. So I'm thinking next time I go to Glencoe, I want to stay at that hotel because it was just so cool. It, was, it had such great character and the food food was amazing and they had one of the best sticky toffee puddings I've ever had so I need to go back there <laughs> The day I left was just so tranquil. It was so wonderful and peaceful. So I took my time. I had a slow breakfast and packed the car. And just as I was driving home, I stopped a lot. <laughs> I took a lot of photos and videos um, and just really enjoyed the my time. I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts called The Plein Air Podcast by The Plein Air Magazine. Uh, and hours just fly by when I'm listening to that. Um, and I did actually make a detour. I went to this place called Dunkeld and specifically so that I could visit the Burnham Oak. It's a 600 year old oak tree and it has some very large old neighbors as well. And there's a really beautiful nearby forest walk. Uh, I think it's called the, the Hermitage. Uh, it's a very old woodland walk with a river and then you finally get to these beautiful falls. It's, it's you know, it's Scotland, it's magical. <laughs> Pretty much any forest you walk in Scotland is gonna have some kind of magical waterfall and mossy trees everywhere, even in the middle of winter. So it was a really nice end to the magical misty mountain trip. <laughs> I hope someday you're able to see Glencoe for yourself because it is an incredible experience. I think any time of year you go, you will just be in awe of the beauty. Mm. Ooh, that is cold coffee. Oh, winter, you beautiful creature. Well, I am gonna go edit this video now and then get back to work. Um, but thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for joining me on this little visual story journey, whatever this video was. <laughs> I hope you had fun. I will see you again soon. Take care.